The Colombo family is the youngest of the five families of New York. This Italian-American organized crime syndicate is one of the five families that emerged from the Castellamorese War in 1931. The family has been involved in a wide range of criminal activities that have gone beyond New York. When it comes to internal conflict, the Colombo family has definitely left a mark in the history books. One conflict resulted in two bloody wars that left several prominent mafia figures dead. All of this started when a Colombo hitman, Joe Gallo, believed his crew was cut short after an important hit. Nobody expected the terror and bloodbath that would happen after this. This is one video mafia enthusiasts won't want to miss. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into the story of Crazy Joe Gallo versus the Colombo family. But before we get into the feud that rocked a nation, let's see where it all began. The Colombo family is one of the five families of New York. Originally, this group was known as the Profaci family, with Joseph Profaci in charge. Joseph Profaci was a profitable businessman who ran an olive oil empire and rose through the ranks of the mob. He ended up becoming mob boss and ran the family for almost 30 years. While most of the Profaci crime family trusted this leader's business sense, one associate believed that he wasn't getting his fair share of the cut. That was none other than Crazy Joe Gallo. Crazy Joe grew up heavily influenced by a life of crime, so it was no surprise that he got involved with the Mafia. His father was involved in bootlegging during the Prohibition era, and he was infatuated with crime movies. As a teenager, he formed a small gang with some local friends and started planning schemes. Although he did join the U.S. Navy, he was later discharged due to his restlessness and a neurological disorder. When Joe got involved with the Mafia, he became a jukebox racketeer. This meant stealing jukeboxes and candy machines. He would then try to sell them to local store owners. If a store owner wasn't interested in buying what he had to sell, Crazy Joe would use violence to make them change their mind. This gangster got the name Crazy Joe after he was arrested in 1950. He had a medical examination, and the doctors determined that he had schizophrenia. Racketeering wasn't the only criminal activity Crazy Joe was involved in when he was with the Profaci family. He was also brought into the Mafia as a hitman but one of his biggest hits was the start of a major conflict. The spark of conflict between Joe Profaci and Crazy Joe Gallo goes back to the infamous assassination of Albert Anastasia. Now, it's never been proven that the Profaci family had anything to do with this mob boss's murder. In fact, nobody knows exactly who killed him. Witnesses of the event said two masked men entered the barber shop that Albert was sitting in that day and started firing shots. The suspect list of who killed Albert Anastasia was a mile long. He was one of the most ruthless mob bosses who made a lot of enemies along the way, earning the nickname Lord High Executioner. But rumor has it that Crazy Joe Gallo was heard bragging about the crimes. Supposedly, he was quoted saying, You can just call us the Barbershop Quintet, in regards to the group that helped plan and carry out the hit. Now, Albert Anastasia was a prime target. Members of the Profaci family weren't the only ones who wanted him dead. He struck fear across the city, with people in and out of the Mafia world. Before his death, there were three separate occasions where he was charged with murder. However, none of these charges were brought to trial. In each case, the witnesses disappeared or refused to testify. Nobody wanted to go against him. Because of how valuable this hit was, Crazy Joe expected a higher-than-average payout for his crew. He felt as though the mob exploited him. This drove him even crazier, and he started to plan out his revenge. His crew was named the Gallows, and two of his brothers were members. They kidnapped key members of the Profaci family, including the underboss. Crazy Joe was ready to kill some of the men they kidnapped, but his brother Larry talked him out of it. Eventually, Joe Profaci agreed to the Gallows' demands. However, he only agreed by word. The Gallows released his men, but instead of getting paid, they declared war, and Joe Profaci was ready to play dirty. He started by convincing one of the Gallo's higher-ups, Carmine Persico, to switch sides. From there, he started to take away the gang's power and resources within the city. This escalated to a very violent clash, where both sides were out for blood. Eventually, both sides reached an agreement and put the war to an end. At least, this is what the Gallo's believed. Joe Profaci had no intentions of backing down. He attempted to place a hit on two of the Gallo's, one of them being Crazy Joe's brother. Both men survived the attacks, but this added fuel to the fire again. The agreement was over, and both sides were ready for a fight. The reinstated war between the two gangs could have reached a boiling point. Luckily or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, Crazy Joe got arrested. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison for conspiracy and extortion. 
Nearly one year after Crazy Joe was sent to prison, Joseph Profaci died from cancer. Before he passed away, he put his brother-in-law Joseph Maliaco in charge. When Maliaco was in charge, the top assassin of the crime family was Joseph Colombo. When Profaci was alive, he was closely aligned with Joseph Bonanno, the head of the Bonanno crime family. Bonanno had a plan to take over the commission. He wanted to be the boss of all bosses and had a plan to take out rival bosses Carlo Gambino and Thomas Lucchese. Maliocco intended to assist Bonanno with his plan and assigned Colombo to help, but Joseph Colombo saw an opportunity here. Colombo went to the commission's justice and informed them of the plan, stabbing Maliocco and Bonanno in the back. The commission took action immediately. Maliocco was forced out of the family and Bonanno went into hiding before he could face any consequences for his plan. The commission also placed Colombo in charge of the Profaci family. While Colombo was leading his mafia, Joe Gallo was doing something different behind bars. He focused on philosophy and literature while also making new friends. Crazy Joe was connecting with black inmates, which was something that New York mafia members didn't exactly do back in those days. These new friendships became very valuable once he was released from prison. They gave him leeway to operate in black neighborhoods once he was released. Crazy Joe Gallo was released from prison and he wasn't over his vendetta with the Profaci family. Joseph Profaci may have already passed on and the family was now under new leadership, but Crazy Joe wasn't over the betrayal. His anger was still burning and he was set on revenge. Anyone who was affiliated with the Profaci family was an enemy of his, especially the new boss, Joseph Colombo. When Crazy Joe was released from prison, he had a network of new friends from the black community. He had full intentions of using these connections to assist him in his unfinished business. Joseph Colombo founded the American Italian Civil Rights League. This was a cause he was very passionate about. He had accused the FBI of racial profiling and even started picketing outside the New York headquarters. Of course, there was a reason behind his passion for this cause. His real goal was to distract the government's attention from his illegal activities. The league ended up accumulating 125,000 members. While he took his campaign seriously, other Mafia bosses weren't happy about how he handled it. Colombo would often make public appearances and do broadcasted interviews. He was drawing a lot of publicity and attention to himself, and this brought attention to the Mafia, something the criminal underworld tries to avoid at all costs. The more he talked publicly, the more enemies he made within the crime syndicate. While Colombo was at a rally for Italian-American rights in 1971, everything changed. A man who appeared to be holding a camera approached him. However, what this man really had in store was something more sinister than a simple photograph. He pulled out a gun and shot the Profaci family boss. Colombo was shot by a 24-year-old named Jerome Johnson. One of Colombo's bodyguards shot Jerome, killing him immediately. While the exact motive behind the crime is unknown, people in the mob had reason to believe Crazy Joe Gallo was the mastermind behind the hit. He had made several connections in Harlem. Some people even believe that he started orchestrating the hit while he was in prison. This hit didn't kill Colombo, but it did leave him paralyzed. He went into a coma and died seven years later. With Joseph Colombo no longer able to lead the Mafia family, Carmine Persico stepped into the role. Out of respect for his leadership, the group was renamed the Colombo family. It didn't take a mastermind to see that Joe Gallo had something to do with this hit. He became the number one target on many Colombo family members' hit lists. Even though Crazy Joe knew that people wanted him dead, he didn't seem phased by it. He walked around the city like an everyday citizen without any bodyguards or protection. In 1972, he went out to celebrate his 43rd birthday at Umberto's Clam House in Manhattan's Little Italy. Four gunmen entered the establishment and placed a hit on him. The assassins were never identified, but there have been many stories going around on who and what happened. Many people believe that he was taken out by associates of the Colombo family. He was assumed guilty by public opinion after Joseph Colombo was shot. Joseph Luparelli, a member of the Colombo family, claimed to have been a part of the group that killed Crazy Joe, but he wasn't the only one taking credit for the crime. Frank Sheeran, an associate of the Buffalino family, claimed to be the one to place the hit. Now that Crazy Joe Gallo, the one who started the entire internal war, was dead, one would think that this battle would come to an end, but it wasn't over yet. The worst was yet to come. The Gallows were livid about the slaying of Crazy Joe. They didn't believe Frank Sheeran's account of the story because he claimed to be the only shooter. Joe's wife, Cena, claimed that there were multiple shooters that night. They believed that the Colombo family was responsible and they wanted to seek revenge. This set off another gangland war between the Gallows and the Colombos. It resulted in 16 people dead. 
However, according to a New York Times article with Peter Diopolis, a member of the Gallows, most of these killings didn't have anything to do with the Gallo versus Colombo battle. Other Mafia members were just using the gangland war as a cover-up to handle their business. After several years, the two gangs were able to come to a resolution. By this time, the Colombo family was being run by Joseph Brancato. He had made a deal with Albert Gallo to give him money to expand rackets. Along with this deal, several of the Gallo gang members became made men in the Colombo family. When reflecting on the Colombo versus Gallo war, it shows us that power struggles can happen within the family just as easily as they can between rivals. When betrayal happens within one mafia group, it can lead to a full-on war. It's not just rivals that could succumb to a fatal mafia hit. Those within the same family aren't off limits. There are many conflicts that can arise from internal mafia wars. One of the biggest concerns is loss of trust and unity from within. Members start to look at each other sideways, wondering who is with them and who would put a knife in their backs. These public displays of violence also damaged the Colombo family's reputation. They faced the repercussions of this war as they were taken less seriously in the criminal underworld. Other Mafia members were displeased with the amount of attention this war was bringing. There was too high a risk of this battle bringing around law enforcement. It increased the chances of key Mafia members being put under surveillance. This war did a lot of damage to the Colombo family's legacy. It also led to the death of many important figures within the faction. While the mob was able to regain stability, this period of time will also be a sore spot in its history. This wraps up our video on the Gallo vs. Colombo gangland war. When Joseph Propacci enlisted Crazy Joe Gallo as a hitman, he had no idea how this decision would ultimately affect the crime family. One misunderstanding led to one of the bloodiest battles in the crime family's history. Crazy Joe was furious when he felt like Joseph Profaci didn't pay him a fair compensation for taking out one of the most ruthless Mafia bosses of all time, Albert Anastasia. Since this was a person many people benefited from having out of the way, Crazy Joe felt that the Gallows deserved a bigger cut. Since Profaci refused, the Gallows took action. Some of his top men were kidnapped, causing him to come up with a devious plan. While Profaci offered a peace settlement, he was quick to go back on his word. This added more fuel to the fire things kept getting worse until Crazy Joe got sent to prison. From here, Joseph Colombo stepped into the role of Mafia boss. While a new head was running the family, Crazy Joe was still brewing with anger. He started making friends on the inside and formulated a plan for revenge. Ultimately, this plan led to the murder of Joseph Colombo and then eventually his own fatal end. How do you think this internal conflict affected the Colombo family's legacy? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. That's all for now. Thank you for sticking with us to the end. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe to see more Mafia Mystique videos.